the basic concept is that I want to talk about what's going to make you successful in the future, right? Because in the end, uh, that's what you want to know. And uh, the current education system is not going to give that to you. Because at this point, you pretty much understand that uh, all of you are being trained to compete with a smartphone. You're, you're being uh, asked to memorize information. Then you're being graded on how well you regurgitate that information on the test. Nowhere in life is that uh, going to be your work. Nowhere. So you're, gonna, you're doing that in high school. You're going to be doing that in college. And you're going to get out. And you're going to be in a job that asks for something altogether different, right? So, so four years of high school, four years of college, eight years. And high school, you say, well, I, okay, fine. It's whatever. But then college, you're going to be forking out uh, you know, $100,000, $120,000 for that. And, and you got to wonder, okay, what is this going to get me, you know, other than this uh, a degree? And at this point, Google, Microsoft, others are going, okay, the, uh, uh, the students leaving college, uh, we can't even hire them. So they don't even care about your, uh, your college resume. They, they, uh, they, they give you tests anyway. And what they're testing is your creativity. And the one thing not being taught in high school or college is creativity. So that's what we're going to talk about because in the end, that's what gonna, is going to make you successful. Now, I want to talk about what you want to know rather than what I want to say. So if you have questions, if you even think about that, hey, uh, if you want to interrogate me, if you, want to, if you have a, a, a thought, uh, if you have a question, ask away. Because I'd rather, again, talk about what you want to know. Uh, but I'll basically go into what creativity is, uh, why being a musician is the, uh, the way to uh, stimulate it, right? And hey, Pat, uh, do you want to periodically remind them to ask questions? Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Absolutely. What, uh, Ty, you see everyone there. If somebody raises a hand, interrupt or, or, or speak out. I mean, I'm not going to do so. How about you guys raise you guys. your hand? Okay. Hi, so, a lot of us are seniors, and I've been on a few college visits in like the past couple of months. A lot of colleges, I feel like, are kind of marketing of that they're trying to teach kids how to learn and how to, like, I guess, quote unquote, be more creative. But do you think they're actually changing, like, their curriculum and going towards a more kind of that route, which route that's going to be more beneficial for the students? Or do you think they kind of just market like that because that's what people want? Uh, it's BS marketing. <laughs> yeah. It's BS marketing because let, let, me, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, you can't uh, 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 understand something unless you explain it as a process, right? So, so ask any one of those teachers and administrators, explain to me what creativity is as a process, and they're not going to be able to do it. So if you can't explain what you're doing as a process, then you don't know what you're doing. I go a step further. I say, if you can't explain what you're talking about as a process, then you don't know what you're talking about. So any teacher and any administrator that says over teaching creativity, they don't have a process. They'll say, well, you know, we, we, you know, we try to get the students here, you know, over here and talk together and work together. And sometimes creativity happens when they're alone. And sometimes creativity happens when they just get out of bed. That's not a process. That's like a wing and a prayer. So, so, you know, we have to get into what creativity is as a process. And, and that's where, you know, I'm talking about where music is stimulating creativity because I can talk about it as a process. One of the things that uh, we'll share with you af afterward is I have an article I wrote that was published nationally about how Einstein used playing a violin. He was a violinist. He was a real good violinist. I uh, used that for creativity uh, and stimulate creativity. And, and people thought, oh, he's just doing that for fun or for interest. No, that was part of uh, the stimulation for creativity. So in answer to your question, they don't know what they're talking about. The, the, you know, if, if they say, well, we have uh, half the tests that anybody else has, and therefore you could be more creative. That's not creative. Again, they don't know what, you know, uh, what, what it should be done as a process. Now, making you memorize information and regurgitate it on a test, they know that as a process, right? And, and so they're really, really good at it. And, and the issue is that for thousands of years, humans have been memorizing information, right? And so they're just continuing it now. And, but for thousands of years, when you memorize information, that was always used for uh, survival and success, right? So if you memorize information, you know, how to make you know, metal out of ore that nobody else knew, then you can make swords, you can make weapons, and all of a sudden your, your town, your village, your, you know, your, your city, uh, your state can, can now win wars. If you memorize how to grow crops. So all the information was always used for survival and success. 
Now the information is used to regurgitate on the test. And the issue is that what you guys are doing subconsciously, what you don't even know, is that you are defending yourself by memorizing the information, regurgitating it on a test, and then forgetting it. Like when you leave high school, I bet everything you remember could be put on like a, a note card. It's not going to be much because what you've done is you've really uh, 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 for forgotten, you know, a, a lot of it, you know, until you really need to uh, bring it up because that's a self de defense mechanism because you know, everything can be looked up here. Right. So, so, so that's, you know, long answer to your question, but yeah, they, they don't know what they're talking about because you need to uh, understand creativity as a process. And then, and then you need to work around what makes, uh, what'll stimulate creativity and how to use it. So, uh, the number one thing that stimulates creativity is, is art and music. And, uh, they're both the same thing. There's volumes are written about what is art, what is music, flowery language, uh, academic language. Uh, in the end, it's basically like a, a physics terminology. It's, uh, art is frozen music and music is liquid art. They're both the same thing. So when you're doing art, you're painting, you're drawing, it's a very slow process, you know, because you're, you're putting out create, you know, creativity, you're, you're, you know, you're getting it back. Music is faster. And within mu music, there's different domains playing acoustic instruments. So percussion is the lowest, then you have brass, then you have woodwinds. And at the very pinnacle, guess what? It's strings. And, and strings is, is what stimulate the most creativity. And you go, well, prove it. Okay. Every single soundtrack and every single motion picture is a string soundtrack. And, and that's because that's the only thing that generates emotion. Uh, Disney and Marvel and all, they're not going to put uh, kazoo solos on it because uh, it's the string soundtrack that gives the emotion. And they've done, you know, fun things. You could see a meme where they put like a little uh, cute jazz tune behind Darth Vader. And, uh, you know, he looks like a moron, right? Because when you don't have that dark music behind him, he doesn't, he doesn't have that depth. And so the music, the symphony music, the, the strings backed by, you know, brass, wood, you know, woodwinds, uh, percussion, uh, is what gives the knowledge to you, uh, the heads up, hey, this is going to be a love scene, this is going to be a hate scene, this is going to be uh, 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 excitement, this is going to be uh, uh, depressing, whatever it is, the music is what gives, gives you that, uh, that basis. And, and with, uh, with music, when you're playing music, you're in a constant creative act. And the constant creative act is that you're, you're, you're listening uh, uh, for how you're playing. Uh, you're listening for how everyone else is playing. And, and you are using your mind to create something. You're using your hands to create something. So it's, it's on multiple levels. When you're playing an instrument, uh, it's on multiple levels that stimulate creativity. And uh, if you imagine it like a, uh, an instrument, and again, I know you love string instruments and you don't, uh, and you love playing. And so that's an that's a awesome thing. But the, the point here is that you are also engaging in what I call a human, super, uh, 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 human superpower. So you're, you're a musician. And uh, when you're playing, you're, again, distributing and, and uh, creativity, and then, and then you get, you're gaining it back. And it's something that's a, that's a really, really powerful, uh, uh, a powerful process. Because uh, part of creativity and the, uh, the core of creativity is that uh, you ask questions. And, and questions, you all think, oh, uh, in, 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 um, in school, the, you know, the question is, is usually very limited to, uh, you know, that, that subject to hand, and, and you all are, are guessing that it's, it's just a kind of a request for information. How do I get here? You know, how many years for this? Well, you know, uh, 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 but the, the question uh, is actually a metaphysical uh, uh, tool, and it opens a place in your mind for answers to fit. So... You could do something else if you want to test that uh, uh, assumption out. You know, have somebody just talk to you for a minute without asking them any, you know, a, a question, and you won't remember what they said. Uh, then, then stop them and ask the question, like, okay, what are you going to do today? And they'll uh, and they'll tell you what they, and you'll remember it because what you, what happens is you you open a place in your mind for answers to fit, and and that is the the core of creativity. Uh, but again, uh, the administrators. Teachers don't understand it because even neuroscientists don't understand it. They don't even understand uh, what's happening with music and, and emotion. So how can they understand uh, a, a creativity? So I've written a lot about that. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll share that information if, if you guys are interested. But, uh, but in the end, 
uh, the emotion that is is uh, 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 driven by by music, that is what allows you to then be uh, 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 creative with it. Any any questions on that? I, I, I have another question right here. I'm not sure Absolutely. where, where okay. he's going to jump on the. Go ahead. Well, I mean, he kind of like already kind of talked about it, but like music, like when you play it, right? You're given a sheet, a sheet music, right? And you're supposed you're right. taught how to play it, and over time, you basically like remember it and right it just comes like accustomed to like it they just you just come robotic to it kind of thing right the more you play it you get like i said you get accustomed to it you remember it so how is that like unleashing creativity because over time like i said you remember the sheet music All right well uh, uh, two parts one uh uh when you're uh, learning to uh, to do something uh you have to be able to do something well in order to have creativity be productive, right? So, uh, so uh, if an artist, you know, you know, Van Gogh or any you know, great artist, they, they started off as not knowing how to, how to draw. A great, a great string player started off not knowing how to play. So you have to get to the point of having skills to be able to then you know, use, it, uh, uh, use them uh, more and more uh, creatively. So in the process that, that you're doing it, and I'll address that, but, but you, you are learning, learning a, a, a skill, whether it, uh, art or music, uh, and then the better you are at the skill, the, the better you can actually uh, uh, create with that within, you know, within that, within that domain. But what you're doing when, when you're learning to play, you're still continuous, you're in continuous question mode. Because if you weren't in continuous question mode the entire time that you're playing, then you wouldn't care what you're playing. You wouldn't care if you sounded uh, in tune. You wouldn't care if you're in tune with anybody else. You wouldn't care. And, and so you're always asking questions. And so that continuous flow of asking questions uh, is, is, uh, is, is what is getting the process, that feedback process of, of, uh, of creativity. Because if you think about it in life, you're really not asking questions that, you know, that, that many times. And, and when you're playing music, when you're trying to get better, you're constantly asking questions. You know, that's, that's why you're getting better. If you, even when you think, oh, it's the same thing. Yeah, but, but you're asking questions and, and, and as, as you're playing it, as you're getting better at it, uh, you're, you're, you're learning because again, you wouldn't get better if you weren't questioning how, how you were doing. And so that continuous process is part, of, uh, a part and parcel of, of the uh, creativity process. Because every great invention uh, always started with, uh, uh, I wonder why, uh-huh, or like, wh why did this happen? So it's always, it's, it's, it's always, it's always a question. And, and so, and so part of, you know, part of that where, where you're learning and even though it's, it's the same music and, and you're getting better at it, you're still co constantly asking questions. And, and so, and, and so and when John, you look I think at he wants to jump back to his, uh, go for, uh, go for it, right any time, go ahead. And ex extend his, uh, okay, this sure. question right there. That go for it. The continuous flow that you're talking about, right? Right. Like you're always like wanting to learn, right? Yes. Isn't that for any other class as well, not just for music? No, I mean you uh, you happen to be you happen to like music, right? So that's why you're an orchestra. Uh, but uh, there's another class that you know you can't stand. You got to take it, right? So it's not for every other class. Uh, but things that you like, uh, yeah, you'll have a, a passion for and creativity for it. That's why Steve Jobs said. If you don't have passion for what you do, there's no hope for you. You have to have passion for, for what you do. And, and, and so people are born with usually something that they like. And the more that they like something, the more they're going to be asking questions. So uh, uh, the more the subject that you really, if you like math, right, uh, then numbers speak to you. Like you look at uh, uh, calculations, you look at formulas, and, 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 and they have a, a language for you. You know, just like Beethoven looked at a, 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 a piano keyboard and it spoke to him. Like Michelangelo looked at, at, at just a block of marble and it speaks to him. I look at a block of wood and it speaks to me. So, so, we're, so we're, we, when we have passion for something, then, then yeah, you are internally asking questions. But if you don't like something, then, then yeah, it, it's, it's hard, to, hard to learn. And the reason is, and this, and this, and this again, we, we, we'll get deep on some things. Uh, I'll try to stick to at the, Kind of like the the tip of the iceberg level but the tip of the iceberg exists because there's an entire iceberg underneath but but basically intelligence and emotion are two separate components 
So, so you've always had emotion along with intelligence. So you always thought they go together, but there are people that have intelligence and they have no emotion. Those people are called depressed. So you can have intelligence and, and if you don't have emotion, you, you can't have passion. And so again, we're looking at what art and music uh, uh, do is that they generate emotion within you. And, and uh, it, th that's, that's, uh, uh, and yeah, if you, there's a subject that you love, uh, uh, you know, engineering, you know, uh, math, design, you know, something that, that you love. Yeah, you're, you're going to be passionate about it. And the entire time you're going to be asking questions because you're going to be interested. Like, how do I make this better? How do I learn this better? How do I learn this faster? Again, another thing you can, you can do, do something you don't like. Uh, uh, say, say there's a, a class you don't like. It's always hard because when you don't like something, you don't have any passion for it. It's always like twice as hard. It's not that it's, 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 uh, it's, it's even difficult. It's just hard because you don't have any passion for it. So do, do something you don't like, a subject you don't like for 20 minutes, then take a break and then do what Einstein did when he got stuck. Start playing your instrument for 20 minutes, play something you like uh, and, and uh, you know, that you, you, you know, have an emotional connection. Then go back to that assignment for 20 minutes that you didn't like and see if, if doing that uh, assignment, the, uh, the second 20 minutes is gonna be much easier. Because, because what happens is you, you're full of emotion and then you're funneling that emotion into that subject. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, more times than not, it's gonna be easier to understand, it's gonna be faster to do, it's gonna be easier to do. Because and all Tom, of a sudden- do you wanna mention that again, just to repeat, uh, just okay, to process okay. So, itself. Okay, so 20 minutes on a subject you don't like. So, so you like math, don't do math. You don't like social studies, do 20 minutes of social studies, right? Uh, uh, or, or whatever it's called. So uh, 20 minutes, then set that aside, play on your instrument for 20 minutes. Just not, not something that you have to rehearse, just something that, that just emotionally makes you feel good playing. And then go back to that same assignment and do it for another 20 minutes and then compare. Is the second 20 minutes of doing that uh, uh, assignment and, and that schoolwork that you didn't like, is it easier now? Is it easier to do? Do you understand it better? Do you understand it quicker? Because, because usually it will be easier. It will be quicker to understand. It, you'll, 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 you'll be able to do it faster. And the reason is because you've generated emotion, right? It's like, it's like generating, uh, 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 you know, if, if you want to use electricity in a generator, then, then you could use that for, you know, to power something. So you've generated this emotion. And, and now you're using it for the subject you didn't like because you didn't have passion for it, right? If you have passion for it, playing music is not going to do anything because it's like you have enough energy or emotional energy surrounding it already that adding a little more is not going to, but if you have like no emotional energy, you can't stand it. And all of a sudden you generate some emotional energy and then you funnel it into, in, into what you, you, you'll see that all of a sudden when intelligence is surrounded by emotion, you're able to do things better, faster, and easier. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, Anytime you want to continue, you want to take some questions. So like colleges and stuff, they have you take tests. But right. But going to a trade school, uh, do you think it'd be better to, you know, like do internships and apprenticeships or go to the college and actually learn how to do the trade? Well, look, th that's, th that's up to you, but you got to understand that uh, 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 college and, and the education system you're in now is going to be, you know, obsolete, uh, you know, uh, sooner than later. Uh, so you have to understand that, yeah, th they need to test you to know where you are. And, th and, and that's, there's a whole system, right? You can't, you can't take down the whole system. I know you have to have a great grades to, you know, to, uh, to get into college and have, you know, good grades for a, a, lot, of the, a lot of the jobs. But then uh, it just depends on uh, what you're doing. Let me give you an example. Uh, like uh, I think in time, in, in, in a short while, we're gonna have what I call triad apps. So, so, so let, let's say it's an engineering app. And, and these apps, right, the apps are not on, uh, are located on your phone. You know, you, you, you have a window to the app, but all the apps are located, you know, in, in the central database, be it in Google, Microsoft, uh, Apple, wherever. And so they start having an engineering app and it's using AI, big data and quantum computing. And so let's say you have a thousand engineers that are doing this work, uh, uh, doing tolerances for stadium and they take a year to do. So a thousand engineers working a year, 
on these tolerances, other things in engineering. Uh, this app is going to do it in 10 minutes. Game over. That's, so, so at that point, you have half the engineers, you know, some with 10, 15, 20 years experience, some with a degree, some with two degrees, are now out of a job. So you're in engineering school and you're going to go, okay, what are you guys going to do? You're going to talk to the teacher. You're going to talk to the administrator. It says, what are you going to do different than, than uh, 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 you know, to make me successful and to make me relevant in, in this new age? And they're going to shrug and go, we don't know. So, so, so you're going to, you're going to be in a, in, a, in a space where technology is going to move that fast. And you already see that uh, uh, trucks and cars are self-driving. You're, uh, there's apps when they're, they're combining AI and big data and quantum computing, they're beating doctors at analyzing disease. You can have your phone go over your skin and, and, and start you know, analyzing what's wrong with you. So, so you have robotics you know, making pizzas and burgers. So in the end, uh, you're gonna be in a society where you're gonna come to your work and they're gonna say, do something new today. So go ahead, do something new. How do you do it? Because the thing is, if, you're, if you need to be told what to do, like you are in school, then they don't need you. They won't need you because you can tell AI and big data and quantum computing and these apps what to do and they'll do it. So, so, so if you come to a society and just think about it, you come to a society where if you're told what to do, you're no longer relevant. So every single thing that you do really has to, has to come from you, has to be new. That's creativity, right? And so at that point, it's like, okay, what's going to stimulate it? What's going to make, uh, 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 you know, what, what's going to make that happen? And so the great part is that you're a musician, you have a superpower, and in time, the, the number one curriculum in U.S. education is going to be music. Because, because everything else is going to be learned and, 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 and then be outdated, and, you, and, and uh, you're constantly going to be using a smartphone. And this, you think, oh, it's, it's uh, just a really simple device. Uh, this is a multi-billion dollar value device. And you go, what are you talking about? It's only a few, few hundred bucks. It takes a multi-billion dollar company to make this. It takes a multi-billion dollar company to design it. It takes a multi-billion dollar companies to have apps for it. It takes a multi-billion dollar companies to have satellite infrastructures. So, you know, when you have a desk, yeah, that's a couple of hundred dollars, but this is a value device that's multi-billion dollars. And you think, well, it, 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 it's just a phone, but think about a mobile device being a little centimeter chip that can uh, uh, put five screens on any wall, you know, a screen for a keyboard, and you could communicate with anybody you want and, and just type on any surface. And you can use apps and pay by the second, by the minute, by the hour, that, uh, that what would take, you know, a thousand engineers a year, you can do it in, in 10 minutes. And that'll go with the financial field, that'll go for any, any field. So, so you're going to be going into uh, a society that the only people that are going to be relevant are going to be the ones that can be creative and that can come to work and do something new every single time. Uh, Any sorry, and John, we got another question here. Go for uh, it. I, think, I think you got your answer, right? So do go to school. Um, go ahead, Rob. So in the future, I know you're talking about the current structure of schooling. Uh, do you think sometime in the future that schools will shift towards like one specific subject that you're passionate in? Or do you think that it's uh, worthwhile to have uh, kind of a well-roundedness in several subjects as well as your primary subject? So, so, so this is the dichotomy that will, uh, education will have to figure out because it is much better to have well-rounded, much, much, much better to have well-rounded. And the reason is because if you're well-rounded, you can ask different questions. If you're like a horse with blinders like this, and you only know, again, I'm picking on engineering because everyone understands it, only know engineering, your ability to ask questions is limited. In the Renaissance, they learned everything. And, and because then they could ask questions and they could, uh, because in order to be creative, really creative, you need to ask divergent questions. And you can't ask divergent questions if you only know one specific field. So yeah, you will, you will need to learn, you know, if you want to be great at anything, science, engineering, any STEM, you know, technology, right? Math, you're going to need to learn uh, uh, the arts. Uh, 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 you're going to need to learn history. You're going to need to learn everything uh, a little bit and, and, and uh, have that knowledge in order to be asking unique and divergent questions to, to be 
you know, highly creative. So that's one thing. It's, it's absolutely better for you to be uh, diverse. And uh, uh, again, I, we, I always refer to Steve Jobs because the guy changed four entire fields, right? Nobody's ever done what he's done. I mean, you know, phones, computers, music, right? I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable. And, and when, it, you know, he, he just went to college, wasn't even, didn't even sign up, just went to Stanford and, and, and hung out at, at, at uh, you know, in the calligraphy class, right? Because he was just interested in it. And, you know, it, it came that that, that was, uh, was imp important later on. So, so, yeah, having diversity in knowledge is critical. At the same time, uh, I don't see where, uh, where colleges uh, are going to be uh, uh, unique in, in having, say, a professor. If, 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 say, there's like an unbelievable, fantastic professor on YouTube, uh, you know, teaching something, then, then they're the ones that are going to have all the students. So the college professor may have, you know, 20 kids that, that may have to take something in there, but there's somebody on YouTube that's got 20 million, right? Because, because they, they, they just knock it out of the park in terms of what they're teaching. So it may, it may very well be that, that, uh, that you have these, these, these uh, superstar professors and superstar teachers uh, sign special agreements with 10, 20 schools, right? And you can only find them in schools and then, uh, they're not even online, but it's just like, it's just like the, uh, the YouTubers now, they, they start off little and then, you know, get bigger and bigger. So, so things will have to evolve. We'll see how it goes, but, uh, uh, you guys are right in the middle of, uh, going to be a sea of change. So, so kind of right at the end of where, uh, college still makes sense. But as soon as you're going to have these apps, as soon as, uh, a, a corporations are no longer going to require degrees. And they're going to test you on creativity with these weird uh, quizzes, which is what they do, uh, and and that's how they hire. Then 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 everyone's going to go. What's the point of paying one hundred twenty thousand dollars for a piece of paper that no corporation is interested in anymore? So so you're kind of at the tail end of that, and and uh, technology, and you could see it. There's and, you, you, and John, you could see it. Uh, we got about three four minute warning here. Um, so I got one more question, maybe another one. If you can briefly, sure. uh, yeah, go ahead. So would you say it's better, like, for us, because a lot of us are going to have to, like, go to college. <laughs> so, um, like, would you say it's better for us to just get an education where it's going to be, like, affordable and just well-rounded, just getting it out and then figure the rest out? Yeah, I mean, yeah, get, get afford, like, with, with every, everything you can and then, and then concentrate on, on things you're passionate in. But the main takeaway, main takeaway from this is, is that, uh, is that, the instrument you're playing, that is what's going to stimulate creativity. It's not going to be an energy drink, which is just makes you wired. It's just going it, to, that, so it's the most important thing uh, uh, that you continue playing because no matter what education does to you, like in terms of like making you this and making you take that and that, that you think is useless. As long as you're playing an instrument, uh, your mind is rewiring your brain to be, uh, to be more creative. And again, uh, uh, Tygoon will you'd pass around the article on that and you could see, but uh, the uh, uh, the idea is that imagine everyone knows right now that that uh, uh, if you want to be an athlete you have to uh, lift uh, uh, weights. Twenty years ago and, and before people didn't 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 realize that they thought if you lifted weights you have to be a weight lifter. But now I don't care if you're a swimmer if you're you know a, a golfer you lift weights. If you don't want to lift weights, don't be an athlete. You know go go get a desk job. So nobody questions the fact that uh, you have to lift weights for physical workout in order to be an athlete. So nobody's gonna question the future that uh, to be creative in any STEM field or any, any field that they're gonna require that of you, you're gonna to have to have a cognitive workout with an instrument, playing an instrument. So, so all corporations now have a gym and where, 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 where you can work out. In time, all corporations are gonna have uh, ensembles, quartets, little ensembles, where, where, because they're gonna go, okay, in order to keep our, uh, our, 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 our staff creative, they're going to need to be playing, you know, playing, playing on instruments. So that's the main takeaway. It's, it, it's, it, that's the most important thing you're doing. And it's, and the fact that you love it, uh, all, all your friends that aren't playing and thinking, oh, I'm doing something more, uh, more relevant by taking this one extra class while you're playing, uh, playing on an instrument. They're not, they're losing. Okay, out. Another minute, one more minute okay. and we'll wrap up. Go for it. No, just you. Uh, how do you oh, want to me? Okay. No, no, oh, yeah. okay. Okay, so that's, I mean, that's, that's the basic idea is that, is that you're, 
I, I, it's not hyperbole. Like you're engaging this human, human superpower because if that's the only thing that differentiates you from, you know, for, you know, from, uh, 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 from, uh, uh, from technology, it's kind of cool. We have, I don't know if anybody's seen Dune, you know, read about it. But the whole point of, of Dune was that, uh, good stuff. Uh, um, huh? it was good. Yeah. Yeah. It was fantastic. But, 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 but basically their, their society is the way that it is because, uh, Artificial intelligence, you know, uh, 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 became uh, 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 became powerful. But it's 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 the fact that you're going to have to be creative and and be better than artificial intelligence, right? Which has quantum computing and and uh, and, and 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 big data and everything else. So so that's you're not going to think faster than 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 a uh, uh, than AI. Uh, you're not going to be able to memorize more information. You're not going to be able to do any of the things that school is now training you to do uh the only thing uh ai will never be able to do is be creative ever because they it's not going to have emotion it's not going to have intuition and it's it's not going to be able to ask divergent questions so 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 if you wonder like what's uh, uh what is going to keep me relevant and, and that's it and anybody going into technology you got to be more creative than anybody else i did a a presentation with uh with it students at the university of nebraska and they're scared out of their minds because because it's it's like they'll go through four years and then and then you know get in a job and then all of a sudden Google Microsoft any other company you know you know gets software and it scales throughout the world you know and they're not needed you know everyone still needs a plumber everyone still needs uh, you know somebody to fix you know their steps but you know writing code writing technology you 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 could you could you could have that as centrally located at at these you know uh, huge corporations so. So technology, especially, uh, uh, you're going to have to be uh, creative and, and uh, playing on an instrument. That's that's what's going to keep you there. Anton, thank you. Thanks a lot for coming into our classroom on the big screen. If, 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 yeah, yeah, guys, do that. Uh, do that thing where you do the, the, the 20 minutes of assignment you don't like, 20 minutes of playing, and 20 minutes after. Uh, we could do another uh, uh, talk if, if you if, if you sense that hey, there was like a huge huge improvement in, 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 in the ease and ability to do that. Uh, that, that uh, you have shared uh, the article with us and then that exercise. Yeah, that we're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. Share, share, share all that. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Take care, Anton.